The federal opposition says the government's central argument to defend its scandal-plagued sports grant scheme has been destroyed after a Senate hearing last night. It was told that almost half of the projects awarded funding under the $100 million program were ineligible. For more, political reporter Noor Hader joins us now from Parliament House in Canberra. Noor, good morning. So just how significant has that evidence been? Well, Joe, the inquiry has heard evidence that contradicts the government's key uh, defence. The Order Office says that uh, more than 40% of projects that received funding were ineligible, according to their evidence given last night. A total of 290 projects that received funding became ineligible at, at the time that those funding deals were signed. That's because a number of sporting clubs had already begun construction and in some cases had already completed the project by by the time that those agreements were being signed, which made them ineligible under the Sport Australia guidelines. Now, the inquiry has also shed some more light on the involvement of the Prime Minister's office in the administration of this scheme. It heard that dozens of versions of that now infamous uh, colour-coded spreadsheet had been shared back and forth between the Prime Minister's office and the office of then Sports Minister Bridget McKenzie. Of course, that, uh, that colour-coded spreadsheet had uh, clubs uh, marked based on which political party held the seat that they were in. Now, the order officers told the Senate inquiry that the Prime Minister worked with uh, Bridget, the Prime Minister's office rather, worked with Bridget McKenzie's office for some seven months prior to the election on this and made suggestions about which clubs should receive funding, although not all of the Prime Minister's office suggestions uh, were indeed uh, approved by Bridget McKenzie. Take a listen to this exchange between uh, Brian Boyd from the National Order Office and Liberal Senator Erica Betts last night. Night. No ineligible project or application was funded. No, Senator, that's not what we found. So if you go to the start of Chapter 3, late applications were taken on board, which were ineligible under the guidelines. Amendments were made to four existing applications, which were ineligible under the guidelines, and they were funded. So we get to around 43% of those which were awarded funding. By the time the funding agreement signed, we were ineligible. And so, Noor, what's the government saying on this? In a, in a nutshell, is it basically saying they would be ineligible on a technicality and so it's not too big a deal? Well, the government released a statement last night re reiterating what it said uh, over the past few weeks, that the no projects found ineligible by Sport Australia received funding. But, of course, that doesn't mean that the evidence given by Sport Australia doesn't stand. They say whilst their initial process did indeed find clubs to be eligible, given uh, delays in the process, they then became ineligible. Now, uh, Labor says this evidence is damning. It says it completely uh, blows the top off uh, the government's defence. And, uh, of course, they set up this inquiry with support of the crossbench after the government refused to release the report by uh, the Secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Phil Gaitchens. That report essentially absolved uh, Minister Bridget McKenzie of any wrongdoing in relation to the broader administration of the scheme. And that report by Phil Gaitchens contradicted the findings of the Order Office, which found that there was political bias in the way that these uh, grants were handed out. Labor, no doubt, in the course of this uh, Senate inquiry, which will run until the end of March, will continue to pursue answers about that report and, and the way the scheme was run. Mm. And Noor, just before I leave you, does it look like we're going to hear from the Prime Minister or the Opposition Leader today? Well, Joe, at this stage, uh, it's unclear whether or not the Prime Minister will be speaking publicly. We do know the Opposition Leader, though, will be up in Sydney later this morning. OK, Noor Hader there in Canberra.